Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how great are you, Lord. We love you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for another day, Father God. We bless you, Father God. What a privilege and an honor it is to be in the house of God tonight. Raise your hands if you agree with me, family. Raise them up high to the heavens. Cry out to the living God this evening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we praise you, Father God. All right. So here we are Thursday night, midweek refresher, Bible study. Praise the Lord. The day is over. Our work day is over. Shake it off, family. Shake it off. We're about to hear the word of the living God. Amen? Couple quick announcements. I'm so excited about this first announcement. I'm excited about all of the announcements, but this particular first announcement of this Saturday. This Saturday, we have our annual Kids Day. Where's all the kids at? Come on, get excited. It's all about you. It's all about the children this Saturday. So I can guarantee you, pastor's going to be running around and telling you it's okay if they have another snow cone. Go ahead and get some more cotton candy. Come on, somebody. It's all about the kids, amen? We're going to celebrate our children this Saturday. We should be doing it every day, but this Saturday is specifically set up for this. Praise the Lord. So come on out. Let your neighbors know. Let your family know. Let strangers in the highways and the byways know. Men, go ahead and bring your ice chests out. If you have extra ice chests at home, bring them out. If you want to put a piece of tape with your name on it, go ahead and do so. Hugo, boom, big blue igloo. Hugo, that's fine. Put your name on it. Fill it full of ice. You know it's going to be a warm day. We're going to need a lot of ice. So bring your ice chest out full of ice. We're going to need waters. Everybody, let's say it together. Water. <laughs> We're going to need some waters, okay, family? So if everybody can bring a case or two, we should be good. Right? A case or two of waters, amen? Let's do that in Jesus' name. Listen, please get with Brother Bert. Uh, I don't see him right now. He might be coming. But if not, get with me. Let's get signed up. If you haven't signed up as to what you're going to help with for this Saturday, please do. We do have sign-ups out in the foyer. So please put your – we got to come together, family. This is about the children. I'm going to tell you right now that they will come together out there on the street for these kids. They will, and they'll try and get them all involved in all that junk. But we're going to come together right here in the house of God in the name of Jesus. And we're going to supply all their needs. Amen? So let's get together and let's find out how we can help. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. We'll be setting up in Jesus' name Saturday morning. The following Saturday morning, where's all my men at? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The following Saturday morning on the 30th, our pastor, Pastor Angel, will be preaching at, it's in Santa Ana. I don't have the address with me, but we will get that address to you, okay? So you will, it's called the Life Center in Santa Ana, Pastor Nati, okay? We will get that message to you uh, through text message, okay, men? That's next Saturday morning on the 30th. There we are. The Life Center. 9 a.m. That's all of us. That's how, this is how we roll at Turning Point. We all roll. Amen? If you're a man, you're, you're there. Amen? Because on Saturday, that's at the Life Center, 9 a.m. Saturday is where we get refreshed. Amen? Saturday is when men get together and get refreshed. Amen? So we're looking forward to seeing you there. Those on Facebook land, YouTube world, come on out. November 18th, 19th, and 20th, we have our men's. We're going up to the mountaintop, family. It's that time again already. There it is. Coming soon, men of a higher standard. 
men's advance. Praise the Lord. November 18th through the 20th, sign up with Brother Andy, Hugo, or Brother Fred. Let's start putting away a little something now. We start putting a little something, 40 bucks a week or something. Maybe not even that. Put a little something away now so that you can be there in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay, so we're all standing. I just want to share this, and we're going to get started here. <clears throat> Jesus solved the problem of sin. Jesus solved the problem of sin. Everybody out here tonight that's out here on this Thursday night are problem solvers. Each and every one of you is a problem solver because you're descendants of Jesus Christ. You have the same DNA as the living God. Come on, somebody. You guys are family. We're family. We are family. Therefore, each and every one of you is, is created for a purpose, on a purpose, and are problem solvers because your father's a problem solver. Amen? The number one fear humans has is death, and our Lord solved that problem also. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Get excited. Woo! Get excited. We're going to live forever in Jesus' name, eternally. Come on, somebody. We're talking about tomorrow and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Get together tonight. Think about that. Think that you have life and life for all eternity. Because Jesus went to the cross. Let's celebrate that tonight. Let's put our hands together. Let's worship the living God. God has a word for us tonight in Jesus' name. Come on up to the altars and be free, family. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for this evening, Father God. We thank you for who you are in our lives, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us another breath of life, Father God. You've given us another opportunity to come before you, Father, and say thank you. You've given us another opportunity to bow our heads in reverence of you, Lord, and to give you glory. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We don't take this thing called life lightly, Father God. We understand that every breath that we're given is from you and from you alone, Father. We give you glory in this house, Father God. Turning Point Fellowship worships you the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We love you. We honor you. We reverence you in this house, Father. It's about you. We put you first in our life, Lord. For you alone are holy and holy are you, Father God. Worthy are you. Worthy is the Lamb whom always causes us to triumph. We glorify you, Father God, and we thank you for allowing us in your presence this evening, Lord. We thank you for welcoming, welcoming us in to your presence, Father God. Bless us, your sons and your daughters, this evening, Father God. Have your way like never before in our lives, Lord. We will do our part, Father God, we will do our part to get out of the way, Father God. We will do our part to give up our own ways, Father God, and rely on you and follow your word, be obedient to your word, and to worship you daily, Father God. Have your way in our lives, Father God, as we bless you. Inhabit our praise, Father God. <laughs> inhabit our praise tonight, almighty Lord. We glorify you and we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Shout hallelujah. Come on, shout the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Give him praise. 
Whatever words you want to say, give them praise. Woo! There we go. Come on, we got to get excited about who we're praising. Put your hands together, lift your hands, dance, shout, whatever you have to do. Jesus Messiah, we lift your name higher. Your name is above every name. You're the Lamb who was slain. If you rose from the grave, you're the King now who reigns on the throne. Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, we lift your name.
Jesus, 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 amazing. Jesus, 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 amazing.
is amazing. God is loving. Amen. He amazes you. You know, a lot of people say that God works in mysterious ways. I never believed that. You know, I believe that he works according to his word and his word is his will. So he works in that manner. 
And his word will amaze you if you follow his word, if you read his word and you pray his word and you live his word. His word will heal you. There's a lot of troubles we don't have to go through. There's a lot of heartaches we don't have to go through. You'll experience it, but you don't have to go through the whole extent. The weapon will be formed and it will be used against you, but it won't prosper. It won't take its full course in your life. But you got to believe that. You got to believe that God is a shield to you. That he is a strong tower. That he is the rock of salvation. You got to believe there's nothing mysterious about that. That's who he says he is and he was and he will He will always be. It's us that goes in and we go in and out. We go in and out in our faith. We have to learn how to stand on our faith. Our faith is in God and no other. There is no other but God for us, Christians who believe God. And I'm not talking about denomination or religion. Don't get that twisted. I'm talking about the ones who believe in Christ, believers. That's why we're called believers. We're called of the way, his way. Can I get an amen, church? Hallelujah. Go ahead and have a seat. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithe and our offering. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering. Bless the Lord. If you need an envelope, these handsome men will get you an envelope. They'll bless you with one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hand up high for they can see you. Thank you, sir. Do I? Oh, I have one. Thank you. On top of your game. It's tithe and offering time. It's time. This is a time of worship. When you give, you give unto the Lord because we said we gave everything to God, right? Our spirits, our souls, and our bodies. That we belong to God and he belongs to us. So when we give, we give by faith and we give out of our worship, our hearts of worship. If it's a dollar you got in your pocket, give a dollar. If you got only a quarter in your pocket, give a quarter. Amen. But you know what you're to give in your heart. Don't let, don't let your heart deceive you. Let God guide your heart. And he'll tell you exactly what you have to put in that envelope. And if you don't have a, a check on your cash, guess what? You got a phone. I know everyone has a phone. If you're like 12 years up, I believe they start getting phones at 12 years old and above, you know, right? So you have a phone, and you can use your phone number right there, 714-477-7736. One more time, 714-477-7736. I say it over and over, forgetting your heart. You won't forget that. You won't even need that, you know. Amen. So give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart and thankful heart in Jesus' name.
Pastor Joe, you want to come up here, please, sir? Come on, we got all the time right here, sister. No problem. Praise the Lord. Father, you are our Father, and we come to you tonight, Lord, just happy, Lord, to lay our gifts at your feet, Lord, and pray that right now you would bless Turning Point Fellowship. Father, you've blessed us mightily, and we give back to you, Lord, according to what's on our heart. Bless those that gave, Lord. Bless those that didn't give, Lord, and motivate them to give, Lord, what belongs to you. Father, as we come up on this weekend, Lord, we pray that we are able to give back, Lord, not only to each other, to give back to the community, Lord sowing seed, Lord. The same way we're sowing here, we're going to sow it in the community. Father, just bless us, Lord. Bless the word as it goes out. Bless every man, every woman, every child, whether they're in the front, the back, Lord. We give it all to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. As the ushers are getting uh, everything ready here, uh, I have the uh, privilege and the honor to uh, introduce our speaker for tonight. And I say a privilege and an honor because this young man is a servant of God. He loves the Lord. And y'all, we're going to just worship all night. Are we good? We could go all night, right? You guys can be released. Or, or you may step down and... Thank, let's give them a hand. Let's give them some, a hand of praise, a hand of thanks. They help us enter in. Not everybody knows how to enter in. That's what they do. They help us enter in the presence of the living God. So this young man that's coming up next, he's going he's gonna to preach the gospel. And I know he's shown himself studying and approved to do so. He loves the Lord and he loves each and every one of you. And he shows that every day when he ministers here in the house of God. It's a privilege and an honor for me to serve by him, side by side, in the house of God. So he's one of our own. Brother Tomas Cordero. Come on, somebody. Celebrate the man of God. We celebrate one another in this house. We celebrate one another, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we release the kids, I'm going to say, why don't we celebrate my pastor when he comes out like that, you see? Because he's put in the time, he's put in the sacrifice, and everything you see here is behind this man of God. So we're going to celebrate my pastor, amen? Hallelujah, thank you, Father. All right, now. Oh, okay, Amaya. You know how we do it up here at Turning Point Fellowship? Get up here, girl. At Turning Point Fellowship, we don't tolerate you. We celebrate you. And today is this young lady, Amaya Goodman's birthday. She turned 10 years old. Amen. So on the count of three, we're going to sing her happy birthday, family, right? Sing like she's one of your own, like if your daughter was up here. Amen. On the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Amaya. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Happy birthday, baby girl. Go ahead and. Take your seat. Amen. And now we'll release the children. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Celebrate your kids or someone else will, family. Good to see you, Blake. And as pastor says, there goes half our church. Amen. But that means Turning Point Fellowship has a future. Amen. Go ahead and be seated, family, in the presence of our Father. Amen. Man, uh, you know, uh, amen in Jesus' name. The Lord's given me a word, and um, 
I've been meditating on this word and, and, and studying this word and hearing this word. And uh, the Lord has given me the honor and the privilege to share it tonight. Amen. And, uh, and we're going to be reading a few verses going through chapter 1 and chapter 2 and hit a little bit of chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And uh, what I want to do is I want to just basically put things in context for you. I want you guys to know what's happening, what's happening in the times that this epistle was, was written and why Apostle Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, his spiritual son. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's start at uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 and 2. Amen. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity, Father God. Father, you know my heart. Father God, you know that I have studied to show myself approved, Father, to you and you alone, Father God. And as I speak your word, Father God, I pray that hearts and ears, Father God, are circumcised, Father God, that they are open to receive what your Holy Spirit will go out and say, Father, for it is all of you and none of me, Father God. So I just thank you once again for this opportunity, Father God. I do not take it lightly, Lord. I surrender myself to you right now and forevermore. Father, have your way and have your say in Jesus' name. Amen. So just... Just to let you guys know the reason I did that, I got on my knees. It's not to draw attention to myself. But about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, my son's in here. I was, I was on vacation and, uh, for, a few, for a few years. And the Lord had given me a vision of pe me standing before people sharing. And at the time, I didn't know what it was. But I said, Father, if that's, if that's true and that's you and it comes to pass, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to thank you. And, and I, I'm going to be obedient because my father is faithful and he is true to his word. It just took me to be obedient and follow his word. Amen? Amen. Okay, so that was, that was Paul opening up his letter. Amen? So here we go. Let's go to uh, chapter, let's go to verse 3 in the same, in the same book. Amen? I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded that is in you now. Verse 6, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Some versions say uh, love, power, and of self-discipline. Amen? So here we have Paul. What's Paul doing? He's encouraging Timothy. He was reminding him from where he comes from that his grandmother had the faith of Jesus Christ. She believed in Jesus Christ. His mother believed in Jesus Christ as well, amen? And, and Paul says, I am persuaded. I know that I know that I know that that same faith lives in you, Timothy. So therefore, stir it up. So sometimes we go through things in life and, and things happen to us and we sit around and we mope around and we do not get in our word and we do not stir up that, that gift, that gift that was given to us when we first believe Jesus Christ, the gift of salvation, number one, the gift of the Holy Spirit, number two, the gift of the Holy Spirit is made to stir us up. We are to stir up the gift, fan the flame, amen? amen. And also, I just need to slow down, sorry guys. And also, for those of us who might not believe that gifts can be uh, released through the laying on of hands, it says so right here in this scripture. We'll read it again, verse 6. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hand. See, Paul laid his hands on Timothy, and Timothy received the gift. So you too can receive the gift, but you must believe first in order to receive that gift. See, when pastor or any other person lays their hands on you, 
you have to receive it in order to, to, to contain it, to have it. Amen? For God has not give us, given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is power, love, and self-control. Amen? Verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed of, of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of, of God. He's telling Timothy here not to be ashamed. Why would Timothy be ashamed? Because at that time, Christianity wasn't as you see it today. People everywhere. There was just groups. Timothy is in Ephesus at this time. This letter is being written while Paul's in prison. Paul's in prison. Paul was in prison before. This is his second time in prison, but this time he knows he's not going to get out alive. He knows he's going to die. So he's writing this letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. Amen? And he's telling him, do not be ashamed because back then, crucifixion, crucifixion was for the lowest of the lows, criminals, rapists, like the lowest of the lows. The Romans wouldn't even crucify their own. That's how, that's how bad it was. So for you to believe in a Messiah that hung on a cross, right, is a, is a joke to them at that time. So Paul's telling them, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of our Lord. Don't be ashamed of your testimony that Jesus dies, died and rose again. Amen? Amen. And, don't, and don't be ashamed of Paul's suffering. Amen? Don't be ashamed. Just like us, family, we're not to be ashamed. People might not believe in our God. They might not have faith like we do. But when things go wrong, who do they run to? When things go wrong, who do they want you to pray for? They want you to pray for them. Can you, can you pray to God for me? Can you do this? And we do because that's what we're called to do. Amen? So I just want to, like I said, I just want to touch on a few things, let you know what's going on in, in the text before we get to uh, some points. Chapter 13. So here Paul's admonishing. He's encouraging. Uh, uh, verse 13, I'm sorry. Paul's encouraging. He's instructing. And uh, he's... Lifting up his son. Verse 13. Hold fast to the, pa the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith. The love which are, which are in Christ Jesus. That, the, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit, dwells in us. So he's telling him to, to, to keep his faith. Hold fast to the pattern. Hold fast to the words that Timothy heard and seen Paul do. Amen. Hold fast to those things. And, 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 and can keep him, keep him in his heart. So we go, and, and, and so he's, he's, uh, he's instructing Timothy to stand firm, stand fast, be loyal to the faith. Don't forget, don't forget where you come from. You, your, your family's deep in faith, amen? Your mother, your grandmother, they're, 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 they're loyal to the faith. So here, so here Paul's telling him once again, hold fast the pattern of the sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. The good thing which was committed to you. What is the good thing, family? Do we know? What's the good thing that, that was committed to Paul? The good news. Exactly right. The good news. Amen. The good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Keep that. Don't let it go. Because what's happening is Christians are dying at this time. Caesar Nero, who was, what, who was the emperor of Rome at the time, was the most brutal and infamous emperor at the at any at the whole dynasty. Nero, yes, he was just a wicked man. And Nero would kill Christians, burn them, dip them in oil, do all these things. Fourth of July just passed, right? Anybody know what a Roman candle is? Right? You guys know a Roman candle? Look up where that saying comes from. Look up where the saying Roman candle comes from. It will open your eyes to how Christians, we were treated back then. Somebody hung on a cross for you. Somebody was dipped in oil that we here today can serve God freely and openly. Amen? Amen. So I just, like I said, I just want, want you guys to know what's going on in this time, you know, and, uh, and, and just put it together. Paint a picture. Amen? Amen. So chapter 2. Let's go to chapter 2. He's still admonishing them. He's still encouraging them. He's telling them to be strong. Amen? Chapter 2, verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier in Christ Jesus. Paul is encouraging Timothy to be strong in grace. The grace of the fact that no matter what happens, no matter what may befall him, no matter what comes against him, he has the grace of Jesus Christ over him. So be strong, Timothy. Be strong in the, gra in the grace of Jesus. And the things that, you, that you've heard, the things that Timothy heard Paul say, watched Paul do, he says, do these same things and commit these things to faithful men. So we must be faithful, family. We got to show ourselves approved. I don't know about you, but I desire to be used by God. I want to I be used in every way that he has for me. Amen? So we, we got to show ourselves faithful. We got to be approved. We hear it every Sunday, every Thursday. Amen? Commitment, commitment, faithful, being faithful. Not faithful to, to a pastor, not faithful to a, 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 an outreach, but faithful to the word of God. Faithful to God, amen? Because once we are faithful to God and the word, we'll be faithful to whoever the Lord puts us under. Amen? So here we are. All right. Now it's time, you guys. You guys ready? I just want, I don't want, I didn't want to come up here and say, hey, blah, 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 and I wanted to rightly divide the word, amen? amen, and spirit and truth, give you context, let you know what's going on, why is Paul talking to Timothy this way, why is he admonishing him, why is he saying stand fat, why is he telling him all these things, because Christians are dying, they're being killed, he's scared, he might, Timothy might be scared, who knows what, what's going on in his own life, but now he has churches to look after in Ephesus and I don't know Ephesus was like a metropolis if you think of a, a, a New York or Los Angeles that's the way Ephesus was you got people from everywhere coming and, and it, it was just kind of like a melting pot so imagine all the people that he had to deal with amen you got Judaizers you got uh, Hellenists you got it's just a lot going on and Timothy is a young man in the Lord having to lead these people amen that's why Paul's instructing them Hold fast to the teaching. The teaching that you, that you learned from me, commit it to other faithful men so the gospel will be, continue. Imagine that. This man in prison about to die and he's worried about the gospel continuing to go forward. He ain't worrying about, oh man, I'm going to die. You know, this is it. I was in prison before. I got released. It's not happening this time. It's, I'm done for. No. He reaches out to his spiritual son with a letter. This is a beautiful, I love this book. I fell in love with this book over the months that I've been reading it. And the Lord told me, I was reading it, and before Pastor even spoke to me, the Lord's like, when you have a chance to speak, this is what I want you to speak from. So I, I fell in love with this book. Amen. Okay, so 2 Timothy, verse 4. So here we have Paul. He's likening, he's likening, he's likening the ministry that Timothy has to a soldier, an athlete, and also a farmer in this, in this, in this uh, few scriptures. So second, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 4. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlists him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding. So, I'm a driver, and so what I do is I'll read the word, and then while I'm driving my truck, oh, when I'm driving my truck, I'll listen to the, I'll listen to the word. So I was listening to the word, and this is what the Lord gave me pertaining to that scripture, right? This scripture is telling Timothy, in order to receive the prize, the award, the glory, he must endure suffering and not give up his faith. As a soldier disciplines himself for battle, as an athlete disciplines himself for the race, and as a farmer has to toil to get the crops, as Jesus had to go, go through all he went through, all the suffering and being hung on a cross for the joy that was set before him, we too must endure things and overcome to the end in order to receive the prize, family. It's not a cakewalk. It's really not. For those that might think Christianity is easy, it ain't. Trust me and believe me, it's not. So we must endure to the end. Going through these things, 
the same way our father did. He, the Bible says if they did it to him, they'll do it to us. If, if he suffered, who are we not to suffer? Amen? All right, so I'm running out of time. Here we go. So let's go to verse 20. Okay, that's, I wanted to share that. Now it's a little bit of a, this is what the Lord gave me this morning. Like I was like, oh, Lord. So here we go. Okay, here we go. Chapter 2, verse 20. But the great house, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. So the big house he's talking about is this, the church. Amen? So the house Paul is speaking of is the church. There will be both vessels being used, but they will be used for different works. So you may be a dishonorable vessel, and, and this might be a sharpening word to some, and we're no, I'm nobody to, to no, this is, I'm giving what he gave me. Amen? So the house Paul is speaking of is the church. There will be both vessels, honorable and dishonorable, and there will both be used, but, be, but for different works. Amen? It's not up to any of us to say who is what type of vessel, but... Scripture tells us and shows us what a dishonorable vessel looks like. Amen. Can we go over to uh, chapter 3, verse 2. So here Paul is talking about telling Timothy about the end times. But it also describes a dishonorable vessel. What's going to happen at the end times, family, how people will be. Not only the world, because the world will be the world. But he's talking about people in the church here. Amen. And I want you to grasp this because it's not, we don't come to church to, we come to fellowship and we come to be refreshed. We come to get fed, but it's so much more than that once we get rooted and grounded in the word. Amen. And that's what I'm trying to give you, the word of God, that the Holy Spirit might speak to you, not Thomas. This is not Thomas. This is the spirit that's within me because I set myself apart for such a time as this. Thank you, Father. So verse 2, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Really quick, I just want to touch on that. A form of godliness but denying its power. You know what that looks like? I'm going to show you what that looks like. Yes, Lord. I love you, Father. Thank you. You're on your face, not all this stuff. And then you get up and then you go to work on Monday and you start cussing this guy out. You go home and, and, and you backhand your wife or you mistreat your wife. That's having the appearance of godliness but denying its power because you don't believe and you don't operate in the fact that you've been made brand new. Amen. So having a form of godliness but denying its power. Amen. So here we go. I'm going to touch on a few things. Okay. What does he say? He says uh, a lover of self. Amen. For men will be lovers of themselves. Being a lover of, of yourself is everything Jesus is not. He gave his life away for you, for you, and for me. So for you to be selfish and say you're a Christian, I'm sorry. That's everything Jesus is not. Even Paul gave his life away. Let's go, really quick, jump over to uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2.10, please. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect. That they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. He suffers all things for the elect. Your family, your people that are out there that should be saved, they're the elect. So he's suffering these things that they may see the goodness of God, that they may be saved. He's suffering all things. Man, imagine to have a, a man of God like that. Suffer all things that some would be saved. Amen. It's a little plug. Here we go. I love you. Amen. Boasters. A boaster is one who always draws attention to himself. But I don't know. 2 Corinthians 10, 17 in the NIV, please. A boaster. The Bible says they will be boasters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.
But if we're to boast, what does it say? Let us boast in the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's a Christian. That's a Christian. So what I'm reading on is dishonorable vessels. And this is what a dishonorable vessel looks like. Amen? A boaster. Anyone, any, a boaster is one who always draws attention to himself. But Christians, if we're to boast, we're to boast in the Lord. A despiser is one who looks down on people. He's a hater. A despiser is a hater. Headstrong. You know what headstrong is? Self-willed. Someone who has to get their way. Haughty. Acting arrogantly or superior than. That is what a dishonorable vessel looks like, family. If we're, if, you know, reading this, I've seen some dishonorable traits in me. Amen. And, and, and so as I was writing this, I'm like, okay, Lord, where do I go? So the Lord says, you're, you're showing them the dishonorable traits, the things. That, and if any of you might relate to some of these traits as I did, it's, it's okay. Come on. How do we become honorable vessels then? I showed you the dishonorable. How do we become honorable? Well, let's go to Scripture. Amen? Let's go to, okay, how do we become honorable vessels, useful for the master, prepared for every good work by being pure? Go to Psalms 19, 119.9, please. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there, guys. Come on, I'm going to make it. Sheesh. It's the final countdown. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand of praise, family. You know? Only Jesus can save a man, and it's only Jesus that can, that can get me to come up here and possibly make a fool of myself or stumble over my words, but I'll do it every time for my Lord and Savior. Amen? Psalms 119. So how do we become a vessel of honor? How do we become a vessel of honor? Here it is. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to the word. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Taking heed according to the word. Amen? Let's go to Romans 12.2. Now we're talking about how to become an honorable vessel. Romans 12.2 uh, in the NLT, please. And we all know that scripture, not being conformed but being transformed, amen? But I like it the way it says it in the NLT. Do not copy the behavior and the customs of this, wor of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Family, how do you change the way you think? The word of God, we can come to church all day, every day. We can sing, how we can do it all. But unless we, we, we play by the rules, as the last scripture was saying, unless we come to the manual, we won't change our mind. We must renew our mind through the washing of the word. Amen. People say, oh, you're brainwashed. Praise the Lord, I'm brainwashed. Because it's the word of God that washed his brain. Because you didn't want to meet the old one. Amen. So here we go. Do not be, so to, in, order to, in order to become a vessel of honor, we're to be transformed, we're to be transformed, not conformed, amen? We're to be the light, the salt. We're to look different than the world. We hear this, every, all the services, yes, but we got to hear and hear and hear because how does faith come? Hearing of the word of God, amen? Okay, so let's go to uh, 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3, please, NLT also. We're talking about how to become a vessel of honor. Because we all fall short. We all fall short, family. And we all, this is a daily process. You know what I mean? This is not one day, hey, oh, my God, I'm perfect. I, I got the perfect vessel. No. No. And I desire to be an honorable vessel. I want the Lord to pull me out of his treasure chest and say, look what once was, but look what is now. Amen. And you have to be pure you have to be disciplined to, to, to be that honorable vessel. I desire all that the Lord has for me. 1 Peter 2.1. So get rid of all behavior, all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all kinds of speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. That's the word, family. We got to put aside all these things, malice, jealousy, we got to put these aside. We got to get rid of them. And like newborn babies, people that ju were just brand new, born again, we must crave pure spiritual milk. That's the word of God. So that you will grow into the full experience of salvation. 
cry out for this nourishment. We must desire that. Now that you have had a taste of the Lord's goodness, that's what we must do. We must get rid of all evil behavior and crave the world, uh, crave the word, amen? amen, which is the spiritual milk. So those are the few things that, and there's a lot more, but we only have 30, 40 minutes. But uh, those are a few things, family, that we can do to, to cleanse ourselves. Amen? Amen. So now, what, is it, what does a clean vessel look like? So here we are. Now we're, we want, we're going to see what a clean vessel looks like. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2, uh, 2, 23 and 24. Second Timothy 20, Second Timothy 2, 23, 24. Yes, sir. So what a, what a clean vessel looks like. A clean vessel is one who, verse 22, flees from youthful lusts and pursues righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. That's what a clean vessel looks like. One who flees lust, youthful lust. And youthful lust is not just what we think. It could be things from your past when you were younger days that, that, that you used to do that don't honor God. Whatever that is. It's a, it's a lust because it's calling for you and your flesh is, call, is, is, is calling to it. But it's not honoring God. Amen? Amen. It's calling the Lord with a pure heart. And a, a, a clean vessel does what? It avoids foolish and arrogant disputes. Knowing that they might generate strife. We're going to sit here and argue with one another about things that are of no consequence, that don't honor and glorify God. That is not a, a clean, that's not what a clean vessel looks like. And a servant of the Lord, oh, here's this is a good one. I love this one too. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Amen. Able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who, who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may not, so that they may know the truth, they won't get involved in foolish arguments or disputes, and the servant of the Lord will not, will not, he will not quarrel, but be gentle and able to teach. He will be humble, patient, amen, because there's people out there that he's going to win. There's people out there, right, that he's teaching because it says right here, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, he's teaching somebody through his actions so that maybe that person that's been watching them is going to have, is going to be able to repent, is going to re come to repentance. Right. Amen. Very good. Amen. So what does a clean vessel look like? Let's go over to 1 Corinthians 13, please. Thirteen four. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. This is uh, it's a big deal, family. I can we can speak in front of people at the potluck or outside, you know. Oh yeah, this. But when it's something about in the front and center, all eyes on you, you know what I mean? There's just something about it that ah, gets me a little, you know? And people would tell me, like, boy, you got this. Boy, you got this. Yeah, right. But it ain't me. That's how I know it's not me because, you know, it's, yeah, Jesus' name. So let's see what a, let's see what a, a vessel of honor looks like. Amen? Chapter, uh, yes, 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 4, a, 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 a vessel of honor suffers long, a vessel of honor is kind, a vessel of honor does not envy, a vessel of honor does not parade itself, it is not puffed up, a vessel of honor does not, ha does not behave rudely, a vessel of honor does not seek its own, it is not provoked, a vessel of honor thinks no evil. A vessel of honor rejoices, does not rejoice in iniquity, but he, re, but he rejoices in the truth. A vessel of honor bears all things, 
believes all things and hopes all things. And a vessel of honor endures all things, family. That's what a vessel of honor looks like. So we've seen, we see what a, what a dishonorable vessel looks like. We've spoken about how to get ourselves clean. How to get ourselves clean when, when, when we come to the realization when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and tells us, hey, you know, you got a few cracks in your vessel. We've learned what, what we could do to, to, to do that. So in order to be used by God, family, in the capacity in which he wants to use you, you got to be pure. You got, your vessel has to be clean. You got to be faithful. And you got to be available. Amen. Amen. But see, I don't know if everybody is like, you know, I don't know if everybody wants to be used at your full potential. We are all walking around with so much potential that we're not being, we're not applying, we're not using it. Why? Because it's God who put that potential in us. It's God who wants us to come out of our shell. It's God, it's God who wants us to reach the person that Thomas or Pastor or Hugo cannot reach. And there's only, only you know, we all, we're all assigned certain individuals. We're all assigned. So uh, thank you, Father. It's going to cost. Amen. So we, so we see what, what it is, what a, a vessel of honor looks like. Amen. And out of 1 Corinthians 3, 4. Um, if, anybody, if anyone in here, I think I'm, I'm getting ready to close, Pastor. If anyone in here seen any dishonorable traits in their vessel, any cracks, uh, I have good news. This is not just, this is not just a hey, turn or burn or a hey, you got cracks in your vessel or a hey, you're living wrong. It's not that. There's always a way out. There's always good news. And that good news is Jesus the Christ, the living God. Amen. So I want to, I want to uh, extend an invitation to any one of you today. If you have some cracks in your vessels, in your vessel, and you feel that, you know, you need to repent. It's a daily thing, family. Repenting is a daily thing. Asking for forgiveness is a daily thing. It's not just a one-time thing because we blow it every single day. But the more we get in our word, the, the less and less it happens. And then it goes from big sins to, man, I shouldn't talk to that person that way. Man, I shouldn't have said stupid. That becomes to you something it's like a curse word. Like you don't, you know what I mean? So those sins that were once big, as we get in our word and we learn how to be vessels of honor, they become smaller, smaller, and smaller. Amen. But we still need to repent. So I want to extend an invitation to anybody who who might seen those dishonorable traits in themselves. Um, come on up. We're gonna pray for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, don't be ashamed. Don't be scared. Do not let the enemy lie to you because right now, today's the day of salvation, amen? And how are we going to get right if we don't take the first step? The first step, family, is the hardest step. But after that, you begin to have traction, amen? After that, you begin to hang around those people that you, that you know you should be hanging around with. You begin to put those things down that you know, hey, that's a youthful lust. I shouldn't touch that. Let me call up this brother. Let me call up this sister. Let me go to those people that I know are going to pray for me. They're going to lift me up. They're going to encourage me. They're going to instruct me in the word. It's not the individual, but it's the word of God. Amen. So, so as we come to a close, Facebook, I hope you were blessed. And I'm sorry I didn't direct too much to you, but um, amen. You're listening. So as we close, family, I just want to thank you, Facebook, for watching. And I want to invite anybody up for prayer. Uh, that if you need prayer, if you would like to uh, talk about anything or just, just prayer, amen. I want to invite you up. Thank you for tuning in with us, Turning Point, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We thank you for, for being with us here this Thursday night. Don't forget, we have Kids Day on Saturday, amen. 10 a.m., bring your family, bring the kids. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Free hot dogs, free hamburgers, free backpacks, everything is free. Come on out. You won't want to miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family.